Good morning, everyone. Um, we're back in the studio at Mia's Acrylic Creations, and yesterday I posted a pinwheel of color, as what I called it, and um, everyone really wanted to know how to do it, and so I thought today that I had time um, we could try to replicate that and show you how it's done. Um, here is the pinwheel of color that I did yesterday that everyone loved so much. So today, I have everything set up um, so you guys can see how I did it. So first of all, I have a, I have three cups set up um, to really level your uh, canvas, which today I'm using a record, I tape the back, and I, I, I find that I put these two popsicle sticks on the back, it just kind of helps me um, through the moving process and drying process, that way I have something to hold. Um, so the next thing you're going to need is, I just have this little cup, um, it's just a small condiment cup that I got at uh, Myers or Kroger or wherever, and I've poked some holes on the top so that it will not suction to my paint. The next thing you're gonna need is all of your leftover paints. <laughs> um, this is what inspired me to do this yesterday is I had a lot of these little pots left over. So I kind of wanted to, you know, not waste the paint. We all know how valuable and expensive our paints are. So I have every color pinks, hot pinks, blues, yellows, purples, oranges, greens, reds, magentas, teals, and any color palette you, you want to have, of course. Um, you'll also need a paper towel, and if I can find it, a palette knife, which is here. This is just a thin little palette knife, a plastic palette knife. Um, that you'll need to swipe the colors, or cut the colors rather, paper towel. And also, um, what I always do before I do any art or pours or whatever, is I always try to make sure, especially something like this where I do not want, oops, paints are falling here. Sorry about that. Where I don't want the canvas or the paints to <clears throat> flow really, um, is I just take a level and I make sure my my canvas is level on the cups and then I just do a few adjustments. That looks pretty good. Um, so, um, let's get started. Let me, this is a little more lengthy process than the pores that somebody sometimes do. I really like this process because it's it's slower and you know takes a little bit of technique so I really like this. So what the first thing I'm going to do is I have my white and oh I forgot to mention um, some of these colors have silicone some of them do not. I do not remember which ones do and which ones don't because I didn't label my little pots so um, we'll see what happens. So I'm just gonna flood my canvas with the white, and my white does not have um, any silicone at all. So I'm just gonna get a pretty generous amount of paint on here. Um, might be good. And I, just a tip, I try to save as much stuff as I can. I wipe my cups out and I also wipe my popsicle sticks to use them for the next time. So uh, you're just going to want to coat your canvas or whatever surface that you're using pretty generously. Um, this is always a slow process. So that looks about right. Um, just make sure all your edges are covered. If they're not, you can always, you know, just go over it a little bit. It'll level out. Looks pretty good though. 
Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is just kind of eyeball the center of your, let me torch this real quick so I can get all the bubbles out real quick. I'm just going to kind of eyeball the center and then just plop this down so it kind of creates, just press it down, kind of creates a ridge around because I don't want any color seeping through there. And then what I'm going to do is with the same white, I just kind of want to make a little kind of circle around here to fill up any ridge that happened while I set that down, and that will level it out a little bit. There we go. And now you just uh, basically pick your colors however you want to do it. I'm doing it messily because that's just how I work. I'm a kind of a messy painter, and even when I'm brush painting or I'm, I'm just messy. So there's one color. And the drips, I just kind of get rid of um, like that. And I'm not going in any particular color order. I'm just trying to make sure I get a little bit of each color. And I'm sure if you um, had you know, the squeeze bottles, you could make it your little ring much neater, but I found that when I tried that yesterday, I didn't get, um, I tried the squeeze bottles with the metallic one, for those of you who saw that, and it just didn't turn out quite as, maybe because the colors, I'm not sure, but I, I found that, um, I don't have much of this color. Just being messy sometimes is good and okay. <laughs> so you're just going to keep piling these on in any order that you want. No rhyme or reason. I'm being very haphazard about this. I'm not um, really doing it just trying to make sure that the color goes all around the ring, basically. And I'm not too worried about any drips. The drips are really easy to fix on the white. They just kind of disappear into the white. Um, kind of want to make sure your ring is not too big. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to use all of these colors. So we'll see. Just kind of want to fill in. And all of these paints, by the way, were, they're left over from, I, f I don't know about you guys, but I find that if I pour my paints the day that I'm going to use them, I don't really get that great of pours or whatever that I'm doing. I find that if I leave them overnight, I don't know what happens or chemically or whatever, but I find that the paint is just better if you let it rest overnight. Get some green in here. This is dark green. And all my paints are mixed with Floetrol. Um, and like I said, some of them have silicone, some of them do not. I think this ring's a little bit bigger than so now what I'm going to do is just kind of clean up any drips that I had here. I'm not too worried about that. And I kind of moved over a titch, so I'm going to just hold this tight and center it a little bit more, as much as I can. <clears throat> then I'm going to grab my my palette knife here.
and you just take your cup off. So the holes really prevent it from suctioning to the canvas. <clears throat> so that helps a lot. Just gonna fire it on over here. And then all you're gonna do is take the flat edge of your palette knife and what I do, I just start off with some, sorry, I'm gonna be moving around here. I was wondering how this, the camera kinda blocks the whole entire view, but this is kinda hard with the camera stand in the way. And I'm really putting a lot of pressure when I cut the paint. Um, so that it really gets down to the bottom of the white. And another thing is to wipe off your palette every time because you don't want to keep grabbing white. And I'm just going to shift this just a tad. There we go. And so just be careful to not go into the middle and um, really push down when you're doing that like you can I don't know if you can see it moving but I'm really pushing down so that I can cut all the way to the bottom of the canvas <clears throat> and I just kind of curve the lines a little bit ah, paint all over this one's messy and you need some room just FYI um, which I did not give myself quite enough room there. And you basically just keep going around and cutting the paint as much as you like. I mean, if you want less lines, do less cutting, obviously. Um, want more lines, do more cutting. And I think I get these squiggly lines, like I said, I really have better luck when I let my paint set overnight. If I mix it the day of and then use it, I don't really get the best results. <clears throat> and you don't want to get your lines too close together just because when this squiggling starts to happen I call it squiggling I don't know what you would call it um, you don't want your lines to touch so and I'm just gonna try to fix this here White is super absorbent, I find, so you can really fix your circle and then it'll level out. But there you go. Um, I am going to try this on canvas um, to see. I'm going to do a couple of them on a canvas. This is going to be a clock. Um, but I hope you like it. I hope you try it. I hope you have great results. And please click like and subscribe and also visit um, Mia's Acrylic Creations and please share. Um, I'm just trying to get started selling some of my items. I'm normally a um, brush painter. I paint on canvas with brushes. Um, so this process has been super fun for me. Um, it's really a way of being creative, inventing new things, and um, that's really fun. So please share, like, and subscribe, and uh, please share your creations um, if you do try this. Um, one last thing I'm going to do before I let you go is I'm just going to poke this along a little bit. And my paint's just a tip or a little bit on the running side. The white was a little bit thicker, but the actual colored paints, I made a, a little bit more watery than usual. And you can start to see how they 
the cells just kind of start to feather out a little bit to make those little squiggly looking lines. But there you go. I hope you enjoy and I hope you try it. And please, like I said, click like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you soon. Thank you all so much for your interest in my art. And these pieces will be for sale on me as acrylic uh, creations. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.